Hello, hello everybody, it's your old pal Tuna here and welcome back to another video. Today, I am going to recreate these vintage ceramic toys in my style. If you are new here, I am a full-time illustrator and comic artist, and each month I choose a new theme for my work. In February of 2023, my theme was Lunar Rabbits, and now here in March of 2023, my theme is Thrift Store. So these little guys are actually from my personal collection. I have about twice as many as these, but I selected, I don't know, the ones that I felt like would go together nicely in this particular composition. All of these were thrifted for less than $5 each for sure over the last like 10 years, but they're kind of hard to find these days. I have to say, I don't think I have found any in thrift stores for quite some time. Today, I'm using Clip Studio Paint on my iPad Pro. These are my primary digital tools. I also have the second gen Apple Pencil, and I should mention that this video is in real time. I know I do a lot of sped up content <laughs> due to the uh, algorithm and the needs of the people People online but this is a real-time video for your pleasure you probably noticed that I started the video out with a sketch already complete I don't like filming my sketching pro process it's very messy compared to the rest of what I do because there's a lot of back and forth a lot of erasing a lot of deleting that sort of thing but if you are curious I have saved the uh, time-lapse export and made that into a little reel over on Instagram so if you do want to see that part of the process it's there you can check it out anyway I am using the G pen tool here in clip studio paint that is um, basically the only tool that I use for drawing in this particular program every once in a while if I need to blend something I will use the paint and apply paintbrush but that's not gonna come up in this particular illustration because I'm going for a very graphic and cell shaded type look here. This is a pretty straightforward process, really. Uh, line art is fairly simple for me. I have my sketch quite accurate, quite like close to what I want the final product to look like. So for me, I'm just following it, cleaning it up, making sure that the line widths all make sense. And my basic rule is that the outline of the character will be the thickest and then the interior lines of the character will be more thin and I try and keep it pretty consistent throughout because I think that also lends itself well to that cell shaded graphic style having a lot of consistency to your line width but at the end of the day I'm sort of following my instincts here more than anything else. Another thing that I generally take care to do is I will sharpen corners uh, of my line work. So when I'm working with these thicker brushes where two lines connect, I can sometimes get kind of a blobby corner and that's a look. There's nothing wrong with that intrinsically, but I prefer to just go in with the eraser tool, sharpen up that edge, clean it up a little bit. And there's actually a really easy way to do this. If you look to the left in the other, you know, camera angle uh, where the paint palette swatches are, the two little boxes where you'll have your paint colors stored. Right underneath that, there's actually a little sliver, you can see it there, with the checker mark pattern. If you select that, it turns the brush that you're using into an eraser version of that brush, which is how I can really easily swap back and forth between the brush that I'm using and an eraser tool of the exact same parameters. You may have also noticed that I have a couple of times drawn half of the item and then uh, duplicated that half, flipped it and created symmetry using that technique. Now I know that there is a symmetry tool here baked into Clip Studio Paint. Truth is I've never actually used it and I have always just used the draw half, flip it, go from there technique. So use the tool if you like, but that is not the only option out there for you. You can also see that for this particular guy, I have flipped the canvas. If you are not flipping the canvas while you are drawing, you are missing out on some prime action. By flipping your canvas, you're going to notice very subtle inconsistencies in the like accuracy of your lines. You can really notice stuff like anatomical mistakes this way. And I think that I personalized my uh, clip studio by adding a button to the top like row where I can just click it and it'll flip, but that should be in your settings somewhere. If you do want to add that, I highly recommend it.
and here we are we find ourselves at the coloring phase of the process <laughs> i personally find colors to be the most challenging part of the process uh, both from a technical point of view and a theoretical color selection point of view but the last year or two i have been trying to approach it differently and i think i've learned a lot through that you know experimentation the first thing i always do is throw down a background color even if it's not going to end up being the final actual color that i use i do not like working from a white background because i can use that background color to inform the colors that i choose throughout the rest of the illustration and create a little bit more harmony that way. You can also see my reference palette up there in the top left corner. In another tab, I also have a secondary illustration that I've already created using this palette, plus a few more colors and shades. And I'm actually tabbing back and forth, color picking from that illustration to pick colors for this one, because I'm really trying to stick to that limited palette that I've already selected to create balance throughout all of the illustrations that I will do throughout the course of this month. So I'm less concerned with capturing the exact colors on the real life toys. In fact, I'm basically just using them as a loose reference. It's much more important to me to not only harmonize them with this palette that I'm using for all of my monthly art, but also amongst each character in this particular illustration. And the best way that I can describe this is by saying like if I have, let's say I'm painting something and there's like a bunch of stuff that's red and they're all kind of like different shades of red or different hues of red, slightly pink, slightly orange. What I'll do is I'll create one red and everything that's red will just be that one red color. I, I, hopefully that makes sense. It's all about limiting my palette. So I'm dropping each color in one by one and I start by filling in obvious choices like the red and the green on the apple and the white and the black and I'm only adding colors as I need as I go because ultimately the goal is to add as few colors as possible. Once all of those base colors are complete, I'm going to start going through and you can see me here kind of picking colors up, bouncing around the illustration, adding a little bit here and a little bit there, highlights, lowlights, Though I don't want to overdo it on the shadows again because I want that really clean style. And here you can see me starting to add color to the line work. Uh, something new that I've been doing lately that I've really been enjoying is once I've added my line art colors that are a little bit more intuitive, such as like, oh, well, it's gray on black, you know, that's pretty straightforward, is going through and adding a little bit more creative color to the line work. And I've also started doing this for illustrations like this where there are a lot of different colors going on and I don't like that, for example, the dog in the center bottom is very like bland. They don't have any colors aside from black and gray. So what I'll do is I'll grab that yellow or that red or that pink and just kind of like plop it in on a line or as a highlight and start to harmonize all the colors in this really playful and creative way. And instead of making my line work like all one flat color, you could see in the mouse's ears, for example, just back there, that the line art itself can have multiple colors within one line. Now, again, I'm talking about stuff, this is stuff I've just started experimenting with lately and for me it feels like a revelation. Maybe you're like, duh, of course you could do it that way, but you could see me going in and adding like a dark green to the line work in specific areas where maybe the highlight is picking up that green color from the background. Here I am with the dark red and it just creates more dimension to the line work while still being kind of overall dark and then harmonizing. That's kind of when I'm coloring, that's my word. It's harmonizing. That's what I'm going for. And so by jumping around the illustration, adding a little here, adding a little there, that's kind of how I slowly build up the process. And the interesting thing is, is when I am illustrating, I consider myself to be the planning style illustrator where I do like to have a really clear idea in my mind of what I'm going to do before I even jump into the drawing at all. Hence with my super clean sketch work, yada yada. But this one was a nice balance because I wasn't really sure what the final product was going to look like. Like I didn't have all of this highlighting in, you know, like the blue highlights on the black or on the apple there in the center, the yellow highlights I'm adding here. But that's what felt right in the moment. And even though it didn't feel like right, like, what do you mean? There's no yellow in the shadow there. You put it in, it looks good. 
break the rules, that's what I say. During the process of putting this together, I definitely had some ups and some downs, especially with that dog down in the bottom there. I picked at him for a long time, but I'm really happy with how this came out. I just think it's so cute, and I didn't really have, like I said, a clear vision going into it and having the outcome be so strong just reassures me, it gives me a little confidence boost, you know? Like maybe I do know what I'm doing from time to time. But this piece was created for my big lunch club. So this is going to be a super cute five by seven print. If you're interested, you can pop on over to my Patreon and find out all you need to know about my subscription clubs. But regardless, you made it to the end of this video. You are my hero. I really hope you enjoyed hearing me talk about my process, seeing it all come together, and why don't you go maybe check out some other videos on my channel. I got plenty for you to enjoy. So like, subscribe, see you next time. I'll be back next week with more content for you. Ta-ta!